Hello and welcome to Unit 8. In this unit, we'll look at the causal structure of space-time, and we'll see why it is that it's impossible for any signal, for any object in the universe, to travel faster than the speed of light. We'll also learn the um, relativistic velocity transformation, how velocities transform from reference frame to reference frame. Our starting point will be to think about causality, the notion that one event causes another. So for example, I might tell a joke, and that joke might cause you to laugh. For example, um, a photon checks into a hotel, and then uh, the concierge asks the photon if um, they have any luggage that they need help with, and the photon says, no, I'm, I'm traveling light. I might think, think about it, it's not that fun. Anyway, so, um, so I might tell a joke, and perhaps, maybe, maybe not, that would cause you to laugh. It, it wouldn't be the other way around, right? You wouldn't laugh, and that wouldn't cause me to tell a joke. So one thing causes another thing. And that's a very common state of affairs in the world, uh, and certainly in physics. Physics at one level is ultimately a theory about things that cause other things. So we've seen so far in relativity that the time interval between two events in space-time is different for different observers. And that seems maybe we're sort of getting used to that idea. But it would be really weird and highly problematic for physics and for all sorts of reasons if in a different reference frame two causal events could be in a different order. If in my frame P causes Q, event P causes event Q, it would be really, really problematic if there's another inertial reference frame in which Q happens before P. So to think about this more, um, I want to visualize some of what I just described um, using a space-time diagram. So let's use a space-time diagram to help us think about causality. So let's say we have two events in space-time. Event P that, uh, for convenience's sake, I'll say is at the origin. And then let's say we have uh, event Q over here. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, and maybe up two. So um, and the, the picture here is that P causes Q. So we could imagine that there's some, there has to be some influence from P to Q, some signal that goes from P that says to Q, hey, Q, do whatever Q is, whatever this event is. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to draw this sort of imaginary causal signal, some sort of signal going from P to Q. And let's see, I also want to draw in here, just for reference, the speed of light. So that has a slope of 1. So this would be a light flash. world line. Um, and so the thing to note is that this signal, whatever it is, is traveling faster than the speed of light. Why? Well, it travels five space units in only two time units. The fastest you can go is to travel one space unit for one time unit. Light travels at the speed of light, which is 1 in SR units. Here this is a number greater than 1. This is about 2.5. So what I want to show is um, that there's something impossible about this. Or if this were true, it would be led to a, a very troubling contradiction. So let's imagine there's a second observer on the scene. And I'll draw um, some primed axes be like this. So maybe this is the x prime axis. Eh, eh, maybe 
be something like that. And that's the T prime axis. So here's the thing, check this out. So in the primed frame, the moving frame, the blue frame, the time coordinate of event Q is negative. So there are a couple ways to see that, but the simplest is, is that Q is below the um, x-axis. The x-axis is all is the t prime equals zero axis. If you're below that, you have a negative time. In the um, unprimed frame, in the black frame, the time for space-time event Q is positive. It's above the x-axis. So what this means is, is that in the primed frame, Q happens before P because Q has a negative time and P is zero. So this construction is used to argue the following. It's impossible to have a um, causal relationship like this where the causal um, signal or whatever, again, whatever the mechanism is that causes Q because of P, that that signal cannot travel faster than the speed of light. Because if it does, then there are reference frames in which Q happens before P, which just shatters the very notion of causality. Um, so before concluding this video, let me mention um, another alternative. Suppose instead of Q, uh, let's see another letter, L, M, N, O, P, Q, there's a Q, Q, R. There's an event R that's over here. Could um, P cause R? I would say sure. The um, causal signal from P to R, that's going to be a little bit less than the speed of light. And you can tell because it's um, greater than 45 degrees or the time it takes is a little bit longer than the um, distance it travels. So um, that's going to give a speed a little less than one. When I do different two observer diagrams, the x prime and t prime axes can go like this and they can wiggle in. But no matter what, there's no way to make r be below the x primed axis. Right? If we're going, as we get closer and closer to the speed of light, these primed axes get closer and closer to this dotted line, but they don't ever like cross each other or anything. So, um, so the point is that if I'm over here in this region, it's certainly possible for P and R to be um, causally connected. If over here in this region, it's impossible for P and Q to be causally connected. So let me end this video um, by writing this result, which is an important one, uh, in a slightly more careful way. So the key result then is that in order for causality to exist, for causality to have any meaning at all, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. This result is sometimes called the cosmic speed limit. It sets an upper bound for how fast anything in the universe can go. Let me say um, just a little bit more about this statement. First, um, invoking causality here is consistent, or is not really a new thing in terms of the principle of relativity. So the principle of relativity says right, that um, the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. So the laws of physics have causality built into them, one thing causing another. And so if they're going to be the same in all inertial reference frames, um, we certainly can't have this business where um, P causes Q, but Q in the prime frame happens before event P. So um, I think invoking causality is not necessarily bringing a new concept in, in here. It's consistent with this notion of relativity. Um, the other thing is nothing can travel faster. Nothing. So what I mean by that is... Um, anything could be used to carry a signal, to carry some information, um, to alert whatever is going to happen here um, at event Q that it should happen. 
So it could be a um, it could be radio waves. It could be a light wave. It could be somebody throwing a baseball. It could be a cat in a spaceship. All of those could be used to establish a um, causal connection. Anything could be used to carry a signal to establish some sort of causal relationship. When a signal arrives, do this. Um, therefore, that's why the statement says nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. So in the next video, we're going to look at this um, geometrically um, in, a, in a good bit more detail, actually in the next several videos. And we'll, when you kind of get a hint of it here, that space is broken down into different regions, and indeed that is the case, we'll see that there are different regions of space that have different causal structure.